What's going on everybody? I'm Gold Gas. This episode we're going back to basics. We're going to look inside some gas boilers. I'm going to give you the names of the parts and we're also going to look at the ignition sequences as well. If you enjoy, drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Push that bell notification button as well. If you don't do that, you might miss out on some uh, new videos that drop. Maybe some new promotions and new competitions, so it's worth doing. In the video, I'm going to show you some parts and give you their names. The middle, going to look at some ignition sequences, the screenshots from the manuals, and some fault finding flow charts. And the end of the video, we're going to look at some boilers inside so you can actually see the parts and where they're located and what they look like in the boiler. This video is aimed at trainees or apprentices that are just beginning to work on gas boilers or want to know more about gas boilers. It's just a guide. Check your manuals for the specific boilers you're working on because every boiler is unique. And don't open up the casing of a gas boiler or work on a gas boiler unless you are with someone who is gas qualified. This is the control board or PCB, printed circuit board. Central heating or circulating pump. Fan assembly, it's an old style and a new style with control board attached to modulate. APS or air pressure switch. Gas valve. Overheat stat. Pilot and pilot injector. Spark generator. There's a push button one here that can also be called a piezo igniter. Thermocouple, found on the older boilers. Electrodes, there is a flame sensing one and also an ignition one. Water pressure switch or sensor or WPS. Sensors, thermistors or NTC sensor. Thermistors and sensors. You have one for the hot water, central heating, fly and return. You can also have clamp on style, flu sensor. So you need to have a little read up. Also different colors from different manufacturers. Hot water flow switch or paddle switch. Domestic hot water heat exchanger or plate heat exchanger or plate to plate. Expansion vessel. Pressure relief valve or safety valve. The yellow one there is a mid position valve or three port valve. Zone valve or two port. Here's the burner assembly and the burner arm. I'm going to show you some insides of the heat exchangers as well. Here's some exploded diagrams of the boilers. I will now give you a brief ignition sequence, but check your manuals for the specific ones for your boiler. Ignition sequences. They're in all the manuals so if in doubt check your MIs. You have your demand for central heating or if you run the hot tap the boiler will start, the fan will run, the pump will run once the fan has been proved to run. Also sometimes there are pump proving switches as well. The ignition sequence will start. The spark electrode will begin to spark. 
it will try this for a few attempts. If the flame sensing electrode doesn't get a flame sensed, then it will end and go to a fault code or lockout. If the burner does light and the flame sensor has sensed the flame, it will send the signal back to the board. The gas valve will stay open. Everything will continue to run until your demand has been turned off or the hot water is off. When the boiler starts up, it will also check the safety devices, make sure the overheat stat hasn't tripped, make sure the pressure sensor is working correctly or it's not overpressurized, underpressurized. So all the safety devices are checked and it may or may not operate depending if they have tripped or not. Here's some of the stats and the sensors that I mentioned before. Flow switch as well, flow sensor, water pressure switch. Got the flu stat as well, electrode. So we have our central heat in demand, that then sends a signal to the board. The board sends a signal to the pump and the fan. As soon as they are proved to be running, that sends a signal back to the board, which sends a signal to the gas valve, which then opens, sends gas into the burner. That begins to spark from the electrode, which also is sent from the PCB as well. And the ignition sequence has started. So your hot tap is opened, the flow sensor senses the water being passed through, it sends a signal to the board which then tells the motor on the diverter valve to open the diverter so the hot water being heated up flows through the plate heat exchanger. Your fresh water is passing through the other side of that plate heat exchanger and gets heated up through the plates. To clarify, the hot water sequence is the same as the central heating. The fan, the pump will run, the gas valve will open, etc. But because the flow sensor has been triggered, the diverter and motor will move into the hot water position, sending the heated up water instead of down the radiators, but down the plate heat exchanger. And then your hot water will get hot from there. Combi boilers can only do one at a time and it will always prioritize the hot water. So if you open a hot tap, your central heating will stop, but you probably won't even realize because the radiators will be hot anyway. Here's a heat only boiler, same again. Once you have a demand, the fan will run. Once it's proved, it tells the gas valve and the spark to begin. You can see here the air intake as well. It mixes a perfect amount of air and gas so it can burn correctly. Gonna finish up with a couple of combis. Here's a newer style. And then there's an older style as well, so you can see the layouts. On the older style, there's quite a few micro switches. On those micro switches behind them are the hydro blocks or the diverter valves. And in those are diaphragms and plates with pins on them. So those plates and diaphragms get moved and they 
push the switch or the micro switch in them so then that activates the central heating or the hot water If you add me on social media, on Instagram or Twitter, then you can find some competitions, promotions and some plumbing disasters as well. That does it for this video. Thanks for watching.